Are you influential? Hey, what's up? This is Pete here. And in today's video, I'm excited to share with you a topic that is so relevant for today's marketplace. Never before have we been able to place ourselves on a platform like YouTube or Facebook or one of the other many social media platforms out there and to be able to build a personal brand literally over night. However, what comes into mind is the influence that we hold and the authority we have within our chosen marketplace. So if you're watching this video now and you're specifically trying to grow a brand online, then this video will definitely resonate with you. However, what I am going to share also relates to everyday life and how we get along with other people. So without any delay, let's get into today's video. When we look up the word influence and what it truly means, it is to have the capacity to have an effect on the character, development or behavior of someone or something. In layman's terms, how capable are we of inspiring, empowering and helping others to make a positive change in their life. Now that change can be something as simple as choosing something different to eat for lunch, or it can be a profound change where we influence them to make a fundamental shift in their character as a human being. Without getting into the details of manipulation, I personally feel it all depends on your intention. If you have a positive intention for the individual in front of you and you allow them to make their own decision, therefore it moves more towards influence if our intention is positive for only us and not for the individual we're wanting to influence or group of people, then that leans more towards manipulation. However, I'll do another video on the specifics between influence and manipulation. For today's video, I wanna stay focused on how influential you are and how we can review three specific areas, especially if you're building a brand online to become more influential and ultimately market and service our products and services more effectively. Brian Solis within his report stated that there are three R's of influence, reach, relevance, and resonance. Let's start with what seems like the most obvious of the three, reach. Reach is simply how far can you cast your net when it comes to marketing or selling your services and products? Or quite simply, when you put a post out on social media, how big is your audience? How many people will see your posts? How many people will react? How many people will like? How many people will comment? Because if we think of reach in terms of influence, it doesn't matter if you are the best person at what you do in the world. If you're standing on stage in front of an empty room, nobody is going to hear your message. So reach is fundamental when it comes to the power of influence. But the good news is it's not all about reach. In fact, I would say that out of the three R's, that reach is the most misunderstood when it comes to influence. And the reason why I say that is because you don't actually need a large audience. Sure enough, Brian Solis is exactly right to say that this is one of the three R's of influence. But the good news is, is that even if you've got five people that you can influence, if you do a great job with them, if you're able to create a transformation for them, or your message lands with them in the right way, which we'll get into in a moment, then already your influence score will increase dramatically. So bear in mind, reach is important, but it's not everything. So let's move on to number two, relevance. I'm not staying true to the report by saying this, but I believe that relevance will always take you further than reach. And the reason for it is simple. You can have a million followers online. However, if your message doesn't land with them and they don't really get it, then they're not going to buy from you or they're not going to be influenced by you. Instead, if you have a small audience and what you share is highly relevant to your audience, now you're in a position where you can have screaming million fans who are like, wow, this person's really got something to say. And your message will relate to their current circumstance. In marketing, I always teach that you want to market to your audience's current situation. If they're going through a tough time right now, be there for them and have a message of empathy. If they are on the up right now, then share what the vision is and maybe what your predictions are moving forward. But at the same time though, bear in mind, relevance is everything. You want to talk to your audience, not at them and also you want to meet them where they are at. I've done it myself. I've been putting my message out there when I was a corporate consultant and I was saying that you could do this too. But the problem was, was that I was doing it from a skyscraper in New York or somewhere in Dubai. People couldn't relate 
to my message. It was too big of a jump for them to leap. So I learned to adjust my message so I relate to my audience. I also believe that where we go wrong in marketing is what we do is we talk about the value that we can add to people's lives. Value is only relevant when it relates to the person you're speaking to. And by the way, I'll add a bonus tip with this too. When your message truly lands consistently, that is going to help you to increase your authority within your marketplace. And the way that we do that is not by simply having the best product, but it's ensuring we think deeply about the message that we're sharing, especially through social media and our marketing, truly lands with our audience. I shouldn't have a personal favorite when it comes to the three R's. However, for me personally, I love this whole thing that your message has to resonate with your market. In fact, I'll be more specific. It has to relate to them and then it has to resonate with them. This is where we get the emotional engagement from the people that we want to influence. So with your marketing or when you're communicating with someone, think about your storytelling, think about the questions that you're asking, how you're coming across, because at the end of the day, you can have the right message that relates to your market and you can have the reach to get yourself out there. But if it doesn't resonate with your market, you'll never capture their attention and ultimately you won't influence them in a positive way. I like to call this whole thing brand frequency. We are all putting a frequency out to the world. And imagine those old transistor radios where you have to tune in to get the right station. You can be working as hard as you want, but if your frequency is off, you're still gonna get that just that white noise. Whereas once your frequency is on point and you resonate with your target market, now they get to hear your song and it becomes effortless. This is why so many people work for years and they wonder why, why is it not working? Why is it not working? Why can't I get the clients? Why can't I build the business that I want? Why can't I influence people? I'm working so hard. But working hard in the wrong frequency still won't resonate with the people that you truly want to help. And if you're wondering, Pete, how do I start to resonate with people? Well, here's three ways that we learn anything new, but it's particularly associated with these three R's of influence. The first one is frequency. How often do we show up? So are we there consistently over time and do we become that go-to voice for that person? Big brands, whether we love them or hate them, if you take Starbucks as an example, they're a great case study of consistency. Over the years, their branding has been highly consistent. You'd walk through the street in London or New York and you wouldn't even need to buy a coffee because every few days you'd be walking along and somebody would be there outside Starbucks saying, here's your morning coffee. And then you became the walking advertisement for Starbucks. Starbucks has been there consistently. And actually, as we consistently hear something within our mind, we actually create neural pathways for it. This is where it becomes a little bit scary that we now say, let's go and get a Starbucks instead of saying, let's go and get a coffee. Number two, when it comes to resonating with your audience is duration. If you're just showing up for five seconds every single day, then your audience aren't going to feel that you're there for them or the individual you're trying to help won't necessarily feel that support from you. Therefore, they're not going to be influenced by you. However, if we look at this in a learning experience, because your audience actually learn to be influenced by you. When it comes to learning anything new, let's take a child learning how to ride a bike. They can ride the bike every single day, but if they just ride it for 30 seconds, then they're not going to be a very good cyclist by the end of it. So how often are you showing up for your marketplace and how long have you actually been there supporting them? Finally, number three, intensity. The more emotionally charged an experience is, the thicker the neural pathways which are laid down in the mind. And that's why you can walk down the street every single day your entire life and the same person could be walking in a different direction, but you never notice them. You walk down the street on a different day and now you see your equivalent of the most beautiful person you've ever seen walking in the other direction. You only need to see them once and you remember them for a lifetime. Why is it that we can remember these experiences from so long ago but we can't remember something that we did today. And the reason is intensity. So that is your three R's of influence today. Reach, relevance, and resonance. What I'd love for you to do is comment below. Let me know how this video has helped you. And if you've got any more questions, let me know before. And who knows, maybe I'll do another video on it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.